Today I will review four different small box games all in one video. Thank you for joining me here at Tantrum Mouse Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. Today, I want to show you four different small box games that have recently hit the market. We have My City, Roll and Build, Clever Forever, St. Patrick, and Scavenger. All of these not only have very different themes, but also very different board game mechanics. So let's dive in first with My City, Roll and Build. This is a roll and write version of My City from Cosmos. Reiner Knizia designed both games. Here's a quick overview of My City Roll and Build. Up to six players can play at a time. There's basically 12 games in the box, four chapters with three episodes per chapter. The main idea is that dice are rolled to give you a shape and a kind that you have to draw on your paper. How you draw them will give you points depending on the rules of that episode. As you can guess, the earlier chapters are pretty basic and then get progressively more challenging as you get to those later games. Each chapter has a theme that runs through the three episodes. Like chapter two focuses on placing churches when this symbol is rolled. So you sort of have to plan out your city and leave space for those kind of structures as you build out each turn. Many of the episodes have a race mechanic where if you are the first to cover certain icons then you'll get more points. And if you are familiar with the original game, you want to surround trees and cover rocks. Trees give you points. Empty spaces at the end of each episode are going to give you negative points, but rocks give you even more negative points if you don't cover them. Now, Melissa and I have played this two players from start to finish. I'd personally say I liked chapters two and four, with chapter four being my favorite. There are some legacy elements included in chapter four, where if you don't surround the bandits, then you have to draw them on your paper for the next game. Now, I wish there was more of that in the game itself. I think the game could have ramped up faster, maybe combining chapters one and two together and maybe even chapters three and four, and then that would leave you with more legacy stuff later in the campaign, like maybe introduce railroads or something like that. Another thing that was sometimes frustrating uh, were the dice rolls. In the original My City, you sort of knew generally what kind of shapes uh, would be used for that given game. But in this new roll and write version, you never really knew. It could be just a one little square or way up to a five square piece you needed to draw. Now the game does mitigate this a little with the ability to take a negative point and skip that drawing phase if you really don't want to draw it or you can't draw it in your city. One thing I really did enjoy was the groupings of the types you're trying to keep together to get you even more points. There's a die that shows X's, uh, lines, and solid. This is the type of building you have to draw. Well, in many of the episodes, you get more points if you can keep those like kinds together. That brings a whole new level of strategy and planning that I found very rewarding and sometimes frustrating, but overall thought it was fun. I also like the way the shapes are made from the roll of the two dice. The two halves of the circle come together and there you have your new shape. Pretty ingenious. And now that we've played the whole campaign, I'll probably just go back and play the last chapter again. The nice thing is there are quite a few sheets for each episode and the sheets are double sided, which is nice. I think this game can appeal to anyone, even if they've never played a roll and write game before, since it has a pretty easy learning curve throughout. Although I will say that I think there are much better roll and write games out there. So let's move on to Clever Forever. This also uses dice, but in a completely different way. This is the fourth in the series of clever games. First with That's Pretty Clever, then twice as clever, and then Clever Cubed. And now the newest one, Clever Forever. It uses the same basic mechanic if you're familiar with the other versions. Roll the colored dice, picking one that you're gonna activate on your sheet, and the colors correspond to different sections, and how well you do in each section will determine your score. So this game is like a dice drafting combo-tastic game. I've had it where one placement of a number led to a series of putting numbers all over because they all chained together. It can be really, really satisfying. This fourth game is probably the most challenging of the four, so if you've never played any of them, I definitely recommend the first one. That's pretty clever. But this one is fun, just a lot more to grapple. In the yellow section, there are three different rows to put numbers. The top 
you are going from high to low, the middle actually gives you negative points, and the bottom positive points. Of course, you're getting bonuses along the way, and you're also getting points if you can complete columns. The blue section is a little bit more forgiving than the other versions in that you only need to cross out two numbers in a given row in order to activate it. The gray section is sort of like the Tetris level as you try to fill in the different polyomino shapes based on their size. Completing the columns is the way to get a lot of points here. Each square in the green section has two spots for numbers. The bottom gets you the bonus. The pink section will only give you the bonuses if you put a five or six in the box, but two, four, and sixes all give you extra points. Threes lets you put another three in the next box, but doesn't activate anything. In the game, there's also a way to increase and decrease the pip value. They call it shining the dice. If you really love the series, then definitely get the new version. But like I said, if you've never played a game like this before, or maybe you only play it once in a while, I really think the original is best. Next, we have a trick-taking game called St. Patrick. I did a little research and it looks like this game was originally called Salvage. The new theme, St. Patrick, brings you to Ireland, where players are trying to avoid snake bites. The general gameplay is like a standard trick-taking game. This one has four colors, each one numbered one through nine. When a trick is led, players must follow the color card if they're able to. If not, they can play a different color. The highest number wins the trick. But at the end of the round, once all the cards have been played, players receive a number of snake bites. Each black card gives one snake bite. There are two sevens in the deck, and they each give three snake bites. Now, the only way to heal yourself is to have relics. One relic heals one snake bite. At the beginning of each round, players go around and sort of bid how many relics they think that they'll need based on the cards they see in their hand. But if all the relics are taken, then everyone's going to be getting snake bites and you have to rebid. The other clever thing is if one person takes all the snake bites in a given round, then that person is immune to all of the snake bites and all other players each take three bites and relics can't heal for that round. The game's over once someone gets 20 snake bites and the person with the fewest is the winner. Now I'm a big fan of trick taking games and I thought this one was okay. I really like the card art and the gold foil on the cards. It's very aesthetically pleasing for a card game but I think I wanted just a little bit more in the game. It felt pretty standard with either having enough relics to heal or try to win all the tricks. After a few rounds, players would make sure they take at least one bite so a player couldn't shoot the moon and take all the bites. So there definitely was some strategy in that. If you just want a simple trick-taking game with just a little added in with the snake bites, then St. Patrick is for you. All right, let's move to the last one, Skullventeer. I will admit, the name is not what drew me to this game. It was the artist, my favorite, Vincent Dutre. The nice thing is though that there is a lore and pronunciation guide in the back of the rulebook, which I wish more games came with. This was extremely helpful. And this game, as you can see, came with a lot of words that need help with pronouncing them. This is a co-op game that can be played one to four players and all in about 15 minutes. It plays pretty fast. The basic idea is that the players are working together to defeat the minions to win the game. And the game is trying to win by having the devil, who's called Eric, catch the Waxer, who is basically the guardian of the forest. This game is inspired from Danish folklore, so you get a little culture as you're playing the game. There's a ring of trees, and the devil is the one chasing Waxer. The players are choosing actions during the game from a display of cards. They let you do things like get cards in your hand, place allies in the forest, change up the market of cards, and fight the minions. There are different allies in the deck that all do different things. The left side of the card is activated when you take the card from the market, and they all hurt the players, like moving Eric one step closer, or damaging a tree. Damaging trees is not good because once a tree is damaged for the second time, it's removed from the game, making the circle of trees even smaller. The right side of the card can be triggered from your hand and have good things like moving Eric backward or even looking at the top four cards of the deck and putting them back on the top or even the bottom of the deck in any order you choose. There's a lot of tension in the game as the devil gets closer and closer and you're trying to manage all the other things like keeping the trees alive, moving the guardian, and killing those minions. I like a co-op game with good tension and this one has it. 
I like co-op games where you can adjust the difficulty level, and this one has that by adjusting the number of trees, and even how many are already damaged. The game also comes with two expansion modules, like Taman's Meddling and Rescue, that introduces new things and new walkter action cards. Not only is the art beautiful, but the components in the game are nice too with some chunky wooden pieces. So that is four games in about 10-ish minutes. I think I would rank them as follows. At the bottom is probably St. Patrick, just a little too basic for me. And then in the middle were the two dice games, Clever Forever and My City Roll and Build. And then at the top, Skull and Tear. I love to know some of your favorite small box games. Let me know in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe.